way toward Oregon. It's 1973, and there's this eclipse, and we're sitting looking at this stupid box, and mom and dad could have driven me to, toward Oregon? <laughs> <laughs> God, um, but that's all we did as kids, is build a box and put it in. Time check. <coughs> Are we go now? Yep, we're oh, ready to go. I've got to do something. Um, is the light setup okay, or do you guys want less lights? Okay, this is fine. Right. Um, so if you haven't seen an eclipse, it absolutely, um, it's a must. It's looking at it through the box is completely different than, and you can spend a lot of time sitting there and setting up really expensive cameras, pointing it at the eclipse, having it follow the eclipse. But my real, my recommendation, if it's your first eclipse, is to get a really nice set of stabilized binoculars. Put down a blanket on the ground, someplace quiet with not too many people around. Lie down and experience it for two minutes. I guarantee you, if you're there alone, you will start crying. It's that weird of a happening. Um, so it's, uh, it is a gift uh, to mankind, and um, you need to go see it. And um, if you lay down a white sheet on the ground, you sometimes, as the mountains of the moon are just getting the last beams of light, you know, it leaves um, shadow bands across, your, um, across the ground or across a white sheet. It's the weirdest thing. OK, learn all about it next week. Hello. Are we live? Are we going? We are live. We're live. We're live. Hello out there. Is anybody watching at all? Yes, we have 13 people. 13, there we go. <laughs> it's better to see me live. Okay. 14. 14, okay. Um, mobile photography. I have given up my DSLR. I, I didn't need to give it up, but I found that in my experimenting with Adobe Photoshop, um, uh, Lightroom Mobile is where I've gone. I have a, my workflow is Lightroom Mobile on my phone. Um, all my photos come in with either an iPhone, and I'm using moment lenses, or I use a Huawei. And the reason I've jumped ship from, well, you can take all this heavy duty equipment with heavy duty lenses and you can get really great results, much better results than what I am getting. But I can travel really lightweight, I can throw everything into a bag, and I believe now with the combination of, this is a Chinese camera called a Huawei, it's a camera phone. It has two lenses, a black and white and color. This is my night photography device. Um, and I run Lightroom Mobile on this Android based device. And it's gorgeous uh, camera phone, but unbelievable nighttime photography and it has some functions inside that lets me do star tracking, long exposures. Um, look at my, um, look up Dr. Underscore, Dr. Underscore Brown on Instagram and you can follow some of my adventures with this camera for nighttime photography. It is unbelievable that I can take star rotations, long exposures, um, traffic lights moving, I can't quite get that on my iPhone, but I still love my iPhone for its connectivity. I can put on lenses on my iPhone, and this is, by the way, this massive rig um, is called a beast grip, and when I'm on board ship or something, I can then strap this to my wrist so I don't drop this in the water. I take everything into Lightroom Mobile. It goes into the Creative Cloud, and instantly, if I've got really nice internet connection, it goes over to my iPad, and these days I'm a mobile phone to iPad user. Apparently, I've been told by the product manager I'm only one half of 1% of the users in the world who do that. I, shooting in the iPhone, working in, um, on the iPad, I think the majority of people are going directly to their desktop or taking it through Lightroom on the desktop. How many Lightroom um, desktop users? Cool. Lightroom mobile users? Excellent. You need to go there. You need to go there. So um, automatic sync from Lightroom mobile. Um, once I come within Wi-Fi and I shoot, I create collections um, uh, that 
sort of like a roll of film. I'll make a new collection each time I go out on a little assignment. Okay, I'm going to go to Pigeon Point. So I'll make a little collection. All my photos go into that um, collection and appear in Lightroom Mobile as well as on the desktop and are all synchronized and they're stored in the cloud and are safe. If I drop this in the water before I've linked up to Wi-Fi, they're gone. <laughs> so I'm always running back to Wi-Fi to make sure that all my photos are captured. The roll of film is captured and sent into the cloud and then I feel comfortable I can throw this in the water and just go buy a new phone and all my photos come back. That's the beauty of it. That's what I really love about this process is that everything's stored away in the cloud. I shoot a lot of um, uh, aerial photography now and I used to use the larger models of DJI's Phantom Copters. I don't know, this thing came out, this Mavic, and I dumped all my others and this is the only thing I use now. Simplicity of it, it just folds up and goes into my same bag that I'm traveling with. This wacky thing I've added on the bottom so I can screw a uh, Luma cube onto the bottom of my copter, so I do lighting from the air now. And um, so I light things and fly around the object while I use a long exposure with the Huawei. And you can see some of that. I'll show you some of it this evening. So what an amazing, amazing gadget. You take the card out of this, and you, you take the card out, the uh, micro SD, and then you plug it into your iPhone with a card reader. It takes all the photographs into my iPhone, DNG images from this copter, takes them into the phone, they're captured by the phone, and then as I enter my Wi-Fi zone, all the images from this go into Lightroom Mobile and are saved in the cloud. It's a really great workflow. I never have to go back to a large computer and I can download a card of photographs because you can imagine, I'm flying over the water a lot. You send this out on an assignment to get some really great photos and you go, wow, I think it came back, it came back. <laughs> I, got, I actually got the photos and then I quickly put them into the cloud and get them captured. Really beautiful workflow there. I'm t talking about all my toys. I have the most expensive tripods on the planet, um, really right stuff tripods, but um, these are really um, beautiful uh, toys for um, setting up and doing photography. And the great thing about them is you can stand on these um, and it's not made of plastic. Pretty cool stuff. My other toy that you're gonna see here in a minute, my photographs, um, GoPro. Um, again, I can take the images off and transfer them into my phone. But this is for under, below, and above water photography. This pushes the water back from the GoPro. You'll see in a minute, it's for really nice effects. This is made by Connect. What a great toy. I wish I could use that more often. Um, let's take a look at these toys. Um, I'm in um, Lightroom Mobile right now on my iPad. Uh, okay, whose phone is that? Whose phone? Come on, tell me. Where's your phone? Was it your phone? Okay, nobody's, oh. <laughs> you know what happens. I know. You know? <laughs> you know. <laughs> it only happens once. It only happens once. The people who have to do you just bother the most on either side of you. Oh. <laughs> No, don't call yourself, because it only works once. It only works once. <laughs> and that, are, you, are you traveling together? You better say no. Okay, okay. Because I don't want him to ever use that cup. Nope, nope. Okay. Okay. Today's presentation. Uh, upon the sea, under the waves, and in the skies. So, with all these toys, um, I can then travel around and um, capture uh, under the waves, um, above the, 
uh, sea and then um, in the sky with all these toys. And these are the toys I took with me to Greenland when I went off. What an amazing thing to do. Greenland is the wild, wild west. You, they. That's a different drone. It is. That one's too heavy and too big, and I had to take a separate backpack. If, if times had been different, and this was a, a year ago, this one came out, I would travel with this one because that one is a separate bag and I had to be charged for that bag to travel with me. This can go inside my suitcase. Yeah, so this, is, this is the Mavic is the way to go. If you go to um, www.russellbrown.com, or we get that? I'm Russell Brown, russellbrown.com, one word, forward slash Greenland. Sorry, I didn't put that on the screen. So russellbrown.com forward slash Greenland. You'll find a website and you'll be able to click on these numbers and find out where to buy all these toys and how much I spent. <laughs> um, so russellbrown.com forward slash Greenland, all lowercase. Um, and so you can find all these toys. Um, I didn't mention, this is a funky little device. It's a, um, it lets me do a panorama. I set it up on my tripod and then it slowly rotates around for a panorama with your iPhone. It gives you a really nice smooth panorama. You know how you get the panoramas and you get sometimes get these wavy this eliminates that wave in the panorama because it's pivoting around the center point on a small tripod. And then um, you can do a panorama or you can set it up in a time-lapse mode and set the uh, iPhone on this and get a time-lapse as it's moving around. Great little toy. Um, this is, um, wait for it, this is called the Black Bolt and it's item number one in the upper left hand corner and you'll be able to click on that you can get them on amazon for about forty dollars it's the coolest little toy cool. yeah my um my uh lights i've been using recently are the luma cubes because they um go underwater and uh, which is really nice okay the toys here we let's go on this trip and um my goal, I'm going to show you some of my images, and then I'm going to take you through a little demo, a workflow from the iPhone to my iPad, um, and then I can th throw it to Photoshop on the desktop, or I can just post it. And these days, I do iPad, I do phone, iPad, post, and I go directly to Instagram and Facebook and um, figure out how many likes I can get. Um, it's all about likes. How did I survive without Instagram and Facebook? I really do not know. The dark ages are before the ability to let people know what you're doing, to share, get feedback. Am I going the right direction, the wrong direction? Um, gosh, I, I don't. I'm, I'm an old. I'm an old guy. But that's an amazing thing. I really don't know how I lived without it. Elulisat was my first stop. Greenland is melting really, really fast. It's scary how much it's melting, and the icebergs come out, um, coming down out of the center portion of Greenland um, into a Lulisat, an amazing place. Um, uh, the Inuit. The lights down. Oh yeah, let's. Can we bring the lights? You. Yep. The on the stage. Yeah, drop the. F that's exactly right. It's the truth. Careful. That almost won a prize. <laughs> almost won a prize. Hey, Russell, which, which model of uh, Huawei are you using? Ah, very good question. While well, we bring the lights down. I was using the P9, um, but then I have the P10. Is there a significant, um, there's a bit more resolution, but I've tested both, and the quality of nighttime photography is exactly the same between the two. You just have a few more pixels on this P10 model. How's that? Better? Um, panorama. Set this up and rotate around um, for panorama of a Lulisat. Narsasqua is the other location I went down here in the lower section. There are no roads throughout um, Greenland. The, the roads, 
stretch for about five miles around each city and then they stop. You have to fly from place to place. No way are you driving around this um, island, which is now a uh, uh, part of the um, Denmark. It's a Denmark um, protectorate. This is Narsasqua from the air, captured with my um, copter. It's an old military base uh, built in the 1940s for men returning from the war. This is where you stopped and got patched up before coming back to the US. Um, this is how you get around the area. Um, there's lots and lots of security. Um, the, <laughs> you can walk right into the cab and start taking pictures, right? And so um, it's a different world there. At the um, reality has not hit um, this area yet, which is beautiful. Beautiful skies. It's always cold. <laughs> Be prepared. This is the this is June fifteenth um, of last year. This is your room with a view. Um, as you get to your first hotel in Ilulisat, um, amazing. The icebergs move around just outside your rooms. Um, this is um, this is high noon, and this is midnight. Let's do that again. <laughs> high noon, midnight. At this time of year, about June fifteenth, we're about one finger's width off of the horizon. Gorgeous evening light that lasts forever, <coughs> and. Um, uh, it, it's hard to, if you've been in an Arctic Circle environment, it's really quite beautiful, that light that lasts for a long, long time. So let's go upon the sea. The photographs you see here were taken with my iPhone, and I'm gripping tight onto the phone with this grip, and I'm using a variety of moment lenses out of a company out of Seattle. I'm capturing these, by the way, and bringing these into Lightroom Mobile and then adjusting them. So um, I'm actually in Lightroom Mobile now, so I could actually go out and readjust these <laughs> during this slideshow. So it's pretty convenient. Um, you have all of your controls for highlights, shadows, detail, color. Um, yes, please. So you're capturing uh, the iPhone. You're just using the regular iPhone camera. I switch, I switch back and forth. Sometimes I use the iPhone's camera application, and then sometimes I'm switching over to the built-in application inside of Lightroom Mobile. The reason I do that, in Lightroom Mobile, I can get a DNG image, and sometimes I want a full DNG, and sometimes I want to capture in the HDR um, format, especially as I'm shooting right into the sun or shots like this. I get a full a dynamic range I can work with, um, really nice feature released for the iPhone, for iOS, and for Android is the DNG format, excuse me, the HDR capture. Um, there's slightly more grain when you capture with the uh, Lightroom mobile uh, application. So I find in situations full daylight, um, no reason to shoot HDR. I will sometimes shoot the JPEG versions using the iPhone um, rather than shooting um, in Lightroom Mobile. And the product manager, if he's listening now, he's probably yelling at me. But I think uh, you take a look at the variety of ways you can take photographs. You don't always have to use the Lightroom Mobile. I also use some other applications, um, slow shutter on the um, phone. Let's do, 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 slow shutter. Let's see if I can. Here's slow shutter. Take a look at the, the icon, um, second from the right. Look at that icon, and remember that is the icon that you want to capture. There's lots of things calling themselves slow shutter, but that's the one you want. It runs on the iPad and on the iPhone. An incredible tool. I'll often use that for calming the water for long exposures. With slow shutter, you can do some, um, get rid of the ripples on the top of the surface of water, get a little bit of motion blur. Um, beautiful for fountains is slow shutter. Back to our movie. Um, 
where was I? Uh, here I am, and I'm here. Are all the people with a heavy glass and a, oh, oh, uh, yeah. Don't. What? Is that the wrong wrong answer? Um, Micah, was that the wrong answer? I think. Okay, we're back. Uh, um, real photographers <laughs> with real cameras, and um, I love the I love the beauty of it's the speed in which I can work. I believe I'm more creative and can be faster on my feet with mobile. And in many of these cases, I'm shooting HDR um, images. And this is a Huawei capture in the daytime. Um, I found that I could get some uh, really nice effects with the Huawei uh, for a, a daytime as well as lower light situations. Um, I process these as I'm working here inside of, I'm presenting you from Lightroom Mobile right now, and I'll go through these and I can um, enhance them or retouch them as I'm working on the project. And I love this ability to, you're connected right into all of your Lightroom tools as you're working. I have a workflow that if I can't achieve something within Lightroom Mobile with all of its controls, I will then switch over to Photoshop Mix on my iPad, and I'm going to demo that after I go through these. Um, you can go ooh and ah. So uh, we're, we're looking at global warming. It's beautiful. <laughs> um, this is the. This area was never so congested in years past. This is then the flow coming off of the center of Greenland, flowing down and c filling this entire channel that only a few years ago used to be clear. So this, this is an enormous amount of ice moving through this channel and out into the ocean at this location. Shooting with my panorama feature here. Um, Icebergs are absolutely the most it's sculptures. It's one of those, each time you come across a new sculpture, and I'm enhancing the underwater light. In this case, I'm going in and enhancing. Let's just see what I can do to this. If you go into your shadows, I've jumped out of uh, my display, you can start to see the controls you have working with shadows here yeah. or your highlights. Can we see that on the screen? Sometimes yeah. there's a little burnout, but I can start to bring back the detail. So I love this ability as I'm thumbing through my photos just to quickly um, work on them. This, 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 these are JPEGs. These are JPEGs. We did not have that um, when I went at this time. The, no, these are, these are DNG, but not HDR. Excuse me. Get okay, back to our show. Um, so be able to switch in and out. This guy is the leader. I was so funny to watch these guys. They have all of their expensive equipment, and they're, everybody brings out their iPhones every once in a while. I couldn't quite figure it out. I thought that was cheating on their part. That's my domain. They can't go there. Um, so uh, this fisherman, we bribed this fisherman. Do I, can I say that? Yes, we bribed this fisherman to take us out into the bay. They, um, we normally go out on a much larger ship. But it's nice to go out on a fishing boat and look at the ice up close. The, um, some of the, the way the ice forms, if the ice rotates underwater, it starts to erode and take on this really crystalline um, uh, ice cube looking formations to it that look like this. So this has been, this has been the iceberg underwater and it erodes in this fashion. 
So if the iceberg's like this, it's never gone underwater, but the portion underwater looks like that. Really quite incredible. Um, and it just seems to be an endless creative process with the iPhone and panoramas, and you can see how far that iceberg is going underwater at this location. Just really, really um, stunning, clear water. No, I'm not. Um, I've never really gotten into um, filters. Uh, you'd think that maybe I should throw on a neutral density filter and drop things down. Maybe I could get more better highlight detail. But I haven't gone that route. I'm, I'm, a, I'm not very, I, <laughs> I keep things really, really simple. And I don't travel with a lot of extra stuff. And I, d I wouldn't call myself professional in any way, and um, I seem to get away with things, but I bet it would be nice. I, there are some great um, neutral density filters for the copters, and um, you can do um, put a neutral density on um, in the daytime, and you can get longer exposures w from the air to get moving water, which is really nice. This slab of ice, um, uh, could have fallen on me at any time as I'm, <laughs> um, as I'm going farther and farther underneath it. See those nice cracks? I would have, I'd, I'd be gone, I'd be gone. <laughs> but the most amazing sculptures happen. I'm using um, an enormous amount of D. Hayes. Who loves D. Hayes? Okay. D. Hayes brings out these details and this color. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, um, this is where I cheat. The iPhone cannot give you that starburst. Um, there's no way. It's, it just doesn't happen. Um, now you know. Um, I'll point out when Russ is cheating. Um, I take this over to um, Photoshop uh, Mix and I add in those effects. However, I did take those effects. <laughs> I get out of my old camera. I pointed at the sun and changed the f-stop until I get different iris shapes. And then I save those against black. And then I can bring them in and use a, a screening filter as a layer in Photoshop Mix to add those in. Terrible. Is anybody offended? Anybody offended? Maybe a little. We don't do it. Just a little? Well, because if you'd said you were really offended, you could have won a prize. <laughs> you should have stood up and said, I'm really offended. That was disgusting. And then I give you the prize, and then you sit down and never say anything again. Um, sculptures, forms. Uh, midnight light. Midnight light that goes on for hours. Okay, don't think about it. Um, our, yes, what am I, sh this is shot, this is shot with the iPhone with um, slow shutter. I strapped the iPhone to the mast, sounds sort of scary, um, strapped it to the mast with a clip that was in my kit of goodies that you saw, put it on slow shutter and then click every once in a while and you can set the duration different exposure times in slow shutter and get effects like this. You can see since I was strapped to the shutter, uh, strapped to the mast, the foreground is in focus. The only thing moving is then the water and the icebergs. Here's an example of slow shutter. Here's um, the normal photograph. Here's slow shutter. This is slow shutter in the blur mode. Um, and this is slow shutter in the light trails mode. Do you see the little particles in the water? So just <coughs> blur or light trails. This is just garbage, little specks of garbage in the water that's moving and you're watching the currents um, flow with the light trails and you can adjust the sensitivity to the light trails with your iPhone and slow shutter. Cool, cool, okay, I got excited about that. Um, uh, midnight sun, the church in town, the icebergs floating. Um, 
Uh, this is a group of kayakers going out. It's a kayak club in the area, and they go out at midnight to go out into the bay. Um, that's my that's my idea of a great coyote club. <laughs> midnight kayaking. Um, it's weird. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> the town. It there's light all the time. Um, they do. It does calm down there. Maybe two, two in the morning. Um, but there's always activity in town. It seemed, and the of course the midnight sun was coming right into our window in our place. So we never had. Um, and there was no blockout windows. I was surprised. We always had light. Another toy I'm using is um, called a Rico um, Theta. I, the Rico Theta is designed to give you a 360 view, but I'm sort of tired of <coughs> having to rotate through the 360 stuff, so I just flatten it out, and I find I get some really interesting panorama effects with the Theta th um, images. Uh, uh, fake or real on the Starburst? Fake, fake, fake. Um, th this is what a star, that's what they normally look like. So the Theta uh, has this really nice wide angle, crazy quality to it. Different fog, fog, fog. I think I've got more fog coming up here. So the uh, captain of the ship says, we've got lots of fog out there. Do you, we were going to cancel because of fog. And we all screamed, no, <laughs> you know, because as you're going to see, I think I need to get up here to more fog. This is the. Um, 360 on the iPhone, I mean, not 360U, panorama with an iPhone, which is really quite gorgeous. Um, and then the calming day, where'd my fog go? I gotta get up to my fog. These are so boring, boring. Bo bo look how deep that goes. Can you see that? Yikes. You have panoramas that you showed a couple slides back there. What's that? I'm gonna take it from the boat. Yeah, so I'm just. Can you please repeat the question? Yeah, so the question was, are, this is a panorama that I'm shooting with this setup exactly. I'm, I have a wide angle lens on it um, from Moment Lens. And in this case, I'm not stabilized on any tripod. I'm just doing a rotation like this, just like this to capture this one, pointing to the bow and the stern of the boat to capture this whole setting. Um, and also, to see the ice underwater. I can see much more ice under the water here on my screen than you can on yours, but that's the beauty. I think the beauty of the panorama mode in um, uh, on the iPhone is really quite nice um, to capture a situation like that with just a single photograph wouldn't quite capture the, the feeling of the moment. And I was just gonna say with um, with the panorama mode on your iPhone, you need to lock your exposure. If you're familiar with that on the iPhone, in the camera, doing a panorama, you can hold your, um, I'm supposed to stand in camera. Am I still in camera? I'm still in camera. You hold um, and tap, tap with your finger, hold and tap and then it locks the exposure. It's critical to lock your exposure on a panorama because as you're moving across, you're gonna get different qualities of uh, the light, <coughs> brighter, darker, brighter. And you don't wanna get these unusual banding that appears in sometimes in your panoramas. And if you lock the exposure on those, you can get much better results with the iPhone. Um, the boat is holding still right at this moment on, on this one. And I did it fast enough, and the iPhone is incredible for stitching that together that I've, I didn't see any problems. And if I did, I could go repair those over in um, uh, Photoshop Fix. Let's see. Okay, we got it. Fog, fog, fog. Time check, time check, time check. Okay. Um, so they were getting ready to cancel the event because of fog, but oh my goodness, the quality of the light with fog and the light coming through was just absolutely stunning. You're going to see um, here in a moment, gosh, it's just, 
it was just quiet, it, sort of that Titanic moment. <laughs> and, and the icebergs came out of the fog. Um, and then the light beaming through, you can see the light coming through. Um, remember, I saw those two different types of ice, the ice above water, the ice below water. And you can see the ice below water is transmitting the light through it. But this was my favorite moment. Overcast with fog, the iceberg underwater, this little tip coming through. You can see how far, you know, 70% of the iceberg underwater. This beautiful, beautiful fog. What an amazing moment as we're just circling slowly around this uh, iceberg in this quiet, and it just isolates the iceberg. So amazing. So if you go on, oh, if you go on one of these events and they say we're canceling because of fog, they could fight them. Fight them because you need to get out there in the fog with icebergs. <laughs> it's un unbelievable light. Okay, under the waves. So this is me with my little gadget. You should have seen the looks on their faces. He comes with a copter, and that was uh, annoying enough. Um, and then he's leaning over the boat, and I'm leaning over the boat once to get this shot. I got yelled at by several of the people on board that I was, my device was in their shots. Ooh, I was bad. I was very bad. Um, Rebel. <clears throat> Rebel. Don't forget <laughs> this. Uh, I didn't bring this with me, but I noticed this fellow bringing this out. And I quickly took a shot of it because it really helped out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, what is because um, of the color balance, um, my iPhone my um, different devices, so I took photographs of this with each one of them, so I could have a uh, neutral balance um, to all my images. It was very quite nice of him to bring that out. <laughs> he opens it up, and I quickly took pictures with all my devices. <coughs> Don't forget that one. So here we are, <coughs> above and below water. Where did, speaking of water, there is the water. Um, so you can see. The, the line that forms around the edge of this device, that, this curvature with a wide-angle lens is capturing this, um, that line, it's such a gorgeous line. And then you can see the iceberg above and below um, like this. Question? Yes. So you just kind of stick it down there and just guess it? <laughs> Do you think I just guess? <laughs> <laughs> what's happening through your iPhone, but that's ridiculous. Just put it in place. Just, that, that's too much trouble. You just put it underwater and just go click, 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 But I really thought this out. I waited for the exact moment. <laughs> no. OK, win a prize. Got me. Um, Close-ups, beautiful. Oh, the fog. Oh, that was a moment. That was a, a beautiful moment. That, uh, <laughs> Already got a prize, but that's good. You know, be careful. Because I can take prizes away <laughs> and give them to the person next to you. You ready? Okay, okay. Um, so I just found that. There's a, there are lots of things happening above, um, but I, no one else in the group was shooting underwater. And so I just thought there was really interesting things happening underwater. <laughs> what, what, what? If the boat didn't make you seasick, the pictures were. Oh, oh. <laughs> I didn't get, I got really, really cold, but I never got seasick. Must be about cold. If you stay cold, maybe you don't get seasick. Um, say that again? You've got seals in the area, but most of them have been um, captured, shot, eaten. Um, it's because you've got the Inuit Indians there, and that was their thing, and they pretty much devastated the area close to the, to the town. Devastated, is that the right word? Overfished? 
Um, beautiful formations. Um, how, that is only, um, this is just coming out of the water about 12 inches. This is a really small, did it look really big? Maybe I should have pasted it in a little tiny boat. <laughs> I need to do that. Okay, you asked if there's any wildlife. Well, in this next shot, this swam through. <laughs> And so, so <laughs> I thought, I put a seal in here the first time. My wife looks over my big shoulder. Don't put a seal in there. They'll believe it's a seal. Put something in they won't believe. <laughs> so I'm pasting this in in Photoshop Mix and using some blend modes and some opacity. And um, I don't know where I got that image. But um, yeah, I stole it off the web. Um, I convinced my wife to come with me. Um, I think it was the only way I could actually go for this long of a trip. Um, this is a small 20,000 year old ice, is that right? Something like that. Um, 20,000 year old ice comes down here and forms these small little crystalline formations that float in the bay. And then I'm photographing them above and below water and getting effects like this. So I never would have stopped. Why would you stop at this, just, it's just a piece of ice floating in the water. And the photography guide says, no, 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 stop. Take wide angle lens, shoot into the sun, get the glisten of the sun coming through. So I'm doing the combination of um, the glisten and underwater and above water, and I'm using uh, quite a bit of, um, of dehaze. I'm also using some um, masking areas off and I'll lighten up the foreground, darken down this one, add a fake um, beam of light there because I can. Uh, fake. Oh, this contrail, this um, up there, real. Eh? I, usually, I, usually, I usually fake those. Um, don't you wish the iPhone could do that? Because um, the people with real cameras on the event, they were getting these gorgeous um, they had wide angle lenses and they stopped it way down and these gorgeous irises and so I just added my own. Yes, okay, remember it. Oh, uh, gentlemen, and then we'll go to your question, yeah? With all the tech gear that you got, you thought about using uh, stereo camera, 3D shots? I've shot stereo before, but um, it bores me. Um, I'm, yeah, maybe it's called so because... close up of the ice. Could have been quite interesting, yeah. I've done 3D. I did lenticular stuff. I really got into that, but as my eyes got a little older, things don't work as well on 3D. Remember to repeat the question. Oh, I'm sorry. Repeat the questions. 3D. Yes. Oh, I'm on this device. Yeah. <laughs> There's some product you can actually buy, but I was spitting on it. Okay. <laughs> really well. Just spit right on it and um, so I'm spitting all the time uh, on that. Well that's the, the amazing thing about ice you're the only I'm the only person who shot that particular piece of ice and it won't exist again. Is that what you're meaning? Yeah, it's it's a sculpture. There's new sculptures, but none will see these same sculptures. So this is a, like a swan. I, everybody was, why would you stop for that stupid thing floating out of the water? And only the, the fellow um, running the event, um, it's pretty amazing. That's, I like going on events with really great photographers in the group. I find that I become a better photographer if there's a good photographer within 10 feet of me. Because, <laughs> um, oh, why is he pointing that way? Oh, I see why! <laughs> it works, it works. Don't go out with bad photographers, go out with good photographers and just sneak up behind them. Um, so, I'm uh, traveling with this group of Swiss photographers. They're very, very serious. Don't tell me if you're Swiss. Are you Swiss? Okay, anybody Swiss? Okay, I apologize. Um, 
super serious, and uh, this was like an offense. I was, I was an, an atrocity. This little buzzing thing was driving them crazy. Um, but I could do this, and they couldn't. Um, I think that also bothered them. <laughs> so this is the boat we go out in uh, Lulisat, and these are these huge uh, icebergs coming down out of the center. Did you show them some of the pictures you showed? Yeah, I shared them with the people, and um, didn't get many comments. I think they, <laughs> Huh. I didn't see any problems. Usually heat's a problem, um, but cold can affect the batteries considerably and drop the batteries. I never went in the water. Um, I've, um, I was lucky. I'm doing, flying it back to the boat and I'm hand catching it out of the air. And I just watched my battery and didn't go below 30% um, battery. Is this my panorama? Yeah, this is a panorama. So I'm in the air flying. By the way, we're, we've now switched to in the air. Um, and I'm flying, and I'm taking multiple photographs. I'm, I'm panning and rotating the copter in the sky, pivoting around and taking a shot with enough overlap. And then I bring these all into Lightroom on the desktop. I wish I could do this from a mobile um, application. But then pivoting around, we're looking toward the center of, the, of Greenland inland, and we can see all this ice coming out toward the ocean this way. Um, so you take all of these, blend, and <clears throat> merge them together in Lightroom on the desktop or in Photoshop. It's the one thing that I keep on asking for. What's that? We have a question online about how many batteries you took with you on the boat. Wow. Batteries for the... For the copter, I only had about four batteries for the copter as I was traveling because they're the, the type of batteries that explode. <laughs> um, I didn't want to bring a lot of them with me on the aircraft. I have to worry about that problem. But it was sufficient as I went out on, out on the boat each evening. It was just enough um, to get um, the photographs. You could just have so many toys. You've got a, a Huawei, you've got an iPhone, you've got an underwater, and this, okay, it, your brain can sometimes explode with the possibilities. Midnight flights um, out in the bay, um, getting in close on and seeing an iceberg from angles that no one else gets to see. I'm hovering 10 feet off the top of this, sitting in the bay, pointing toward the midnight sun. Yikes. Have I sold you on this? Yeah. That's, um, that is a nice toy. Well, well worth it. Um, and to see the 70% of the iceberg underwater um, from the air and to um, get amazing shots. No, just the available midnight sun is coming straight across in this particular um, shot. This has a um, 12 megapixel camera, very, um, some noise. I, I'd say it's equivalent or equal to an iPhone in quality. Um, and just getting uh, angles and positioning and flying around. Um, real or fake? Fake. Fake. <laughs> Well, it started to look like an animal, so I just enhanced it a little bit more <laughs> with the liquify in um, Photoshop um, mix and fix on the, on the iPad. I sometimes see things I just saw. I said, that's a little bit like an animal. Let's make it a little bit more like an animal. Um, oh, boring, 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 boring. Um, so. Yeah. But do you see what you're taking a picture of? It looks like you have. Oh, with the copter, I'm down and I've got my iPhone down on in on the boat, and I can see everything that the copter is seeing. Is this Bluetooth? Um, it's using a, a 
<laughs> you have a controller that talks to the copter, and they talk by radio. Um, um, megahertz radio signal goes back and forth, very strong quality radio. Then from the controller, it uses a Wi-Fi connection to the phone, so the signal comes to the controller, controller sends it to the phone, and you get really solid, clear images. Three years ago, they were trying to use Wi-Fi and other technologies to bring the image in. It would always break up, and you wouldn't be able to see what you were photographing. But now the technology is astounding, absolutely astounding, the quality. And you can fly two miles away from your location, illegally. Um, <laughs> You have to have this within sight. You have to be able to see this um, legally um, to be flying, but the distances they're giving you is fantastic. Um, that legal thing, is that in the US only, or is that also in Greenland? Well, Greenland is the, um, out, it's the um, wild, wild west. There were no rules, regulations, <laughs> or nothing when I went. That's gonna change fast, I suspect. <laughs> It's one of the last places on the planet that doesn't have any rules and regulations yet. It's just so sparsely populated, how can I possibly kill anything except <laughs> melting snow? Except yeah, um, so that's, that's what I really looked for. I wanted to go to some place like Antarctica, but it's a reserve, it's um, protected, you can't bring out any copters off of any ship in Antarctica, maybe off of a private ship. So the place to get icebergs is still, uh, photographs of icebergs from the air is still only Greenland. Okay. Boring, boring. <laughs> um, we had, came over to a small um, uh, spot here. This is a, a yurt or a little hut you can rent and they'll drop you and leave you in this for um, a couple weeks. It's <laughs> supplied with food and everything you would need and then you can do hike and tour around the area from that location. But we just spent the evening here and had our midnight um, dinner. Um, sort of fake, sort of real, sort of enhanced, <laughs> enhanced. Um, oh, there it is. So that's the location to find um, tips and techniques on Lightroom Mobile. All of my toys um, are listed there. And my presentation is there as well. So you can take a look at the photos um, a little bit closer up. And I'm broadcasting those as a Lightroom Mobile. Um, as you can see, let's find one. If I go over to this flyout menu, I'm sharing that collection. Yeah, a question. Uh, Russell, how many uh, centuries ago was uh, <laughs> when Greenland, I born? Is, is, <laughs> no, was Greenland exposed like this? Um, the, uh, no, it's not centuries. It's only um, this. The latest melt yeah. is happening much faster right now. I don't think. I think 20 years ago things were quite different than they are today. <coughs> right. I think it's so it used to be like this, where you. Could See on the um, it used to be covered with more ice and snow, and the icebergs apparently were very different and fewer. And they didn't come down out of the center in such mass migration as they do now. And apparently the ice was a different color, different texture, and, um, um, because of the, the um, temperature of the ice coming off of the land. And so. Um, the locals say that a completely different quality of ice for photography now than it was um, 20 years ago. Yeah, so, woo, woo. It's beautiful, but scary. Yeah. Does your website contain your recommendation for the new copter? Um, no, it doesn't. This is called the Mavic Pro, and it's just my, my total recommendation for lightweight and simple for brains like mine. Um, and um, you can go to a higher quality camera with something called a DJI um, Phantom 4 Pro. It's called Phantom 4 Pro. It comes with, yes, um, gosh, not even 12 megapixels anymore. Is it 14? Um, 
much more resolution, super high quality um, lens and resolution on the DJI Phantom 4 Pro. This has the same camera as the DJI Phantom 4, but not the Pro version. So the question is, why am I flying? I'm not flying with the best camera from DJI. I'm flying with the easiest, most lightweight, perfect camera from DJI. Um, because I'm not, I've used the big cameras before, and uh, it's just too much, um, I don't want the hassle of being able to, Look at this, I am so lazy, I don't even want to put the blades on. Because um, these blades are already right there, ready to go. When the centrifugal force starts up, they fly and lock into position. That's how lazy I am. Um, just the convenience of this and the quality of the photographs is fantastic. So this quality is the same quality we just saw um, from this camera. Yeah, Michael. Just for everybody's information, the DJI just came out with a smaller, even more compact uh, machine, which I'm probably going to go and get because it's a little cheaper, it's a little smaller, it's a lot, little more for It's called the Spark. Uh, spark. Um, I haven't seen one yet. I hope to see the Spark. The Spark takes off from your hand, and you have no controller, and then it goes up there and hovers and looks at you, and you talk to it with your hand. You, you, can't you can control it with a the phone. They also have a special controller, but yeah, the whole hand thing is pretty. <laughs> the spark, the sparks, um, I I see it. It's it's moving toward the consumer a little bit more fun toy. I'd be very curious to see what your results are with it. It's I don't think I'm going to go to a spark. I think I'm going to stay to this type of toy. I guess with a pre-programmed spiral mode and stuff like that, which I'm like, you know, yeah. I don't have to fly the machine to do it. It'll yeah. Work. yeah, that's a pretty amazing machine. And you hold your you hold your hand out, and it comes over and lands on your hand. <laughs> OK, that's a good toy. The technology, the technology from um, DJI is stunning where they're going. The question is, should I buy any other copter on the market? No. Um, and I don't get paid by DJI, I just use their products and I know that um, so smart, so well designed. The software is even well designed. Um, they fly themselves. It's been a big difference. I started off with the DJI's four years ago and no camera on board. You had to, can you imagine somebody blindly going around and taking photographs from the sky? Just, um, yeah, that's what you had to do um, four years ago. And now we can see the images, compose the image, adjust the exposure, time lapse, um, amazing stuff. Um, OK, let's see if I can um, find my demos. So how does this all work? Scrolling along here, demo, demo, demo. This is how bad I've got to look in here and find this with my uh, glasses. There it is. Gosh, that's one of my pet peeves. Look at the way they do this. I've been yelling at them, and if I tell you in the public and tell you live, if the product manager is watching, um, and our time check, time check. OK, good. Um, how ridiculous is this? It, <laughs> You'd think it should alphabetically go down one column and down the other column. It goes across. Oh. Mike, what, what's that all about? What's that? And look at this gap. My eyes, my brain can't jump this gap. <laughs> God. Um, where was I? I was in demo for a while, and then there we go. Yeah. So. Let's take a look at a, a project um, and my workflow with a couple projects here. Let's let's start with this guy right here. Quick question on drones. Yes. Is there an easy way to figure out what is legal in which country? Um, there are some, uh, in the US, you can go to the FAA site. And they're also, um, so that they are, you can go to that site and see all the rules. You have to follow a test to become a professional photographer, if you want to sell your photographs, um, you have to take an online um, test, uh, like a pilot's license, so that you can qualify in the US. There are websites 
that tell you also uh, locations in the U.S. that you can and cannot fly. I do not know those as well as I should, but the best place to look is to go to uh, Facebook and look for the DJI Facebook, the official DJI Facebook page, and they have all the information there, and you can ask questions as well and learn about all those links um, on the DJI pages. They have a DJI page for the Phantom, they have a DJI page for the Mavic, and all the users exchange notes and compare things about areas to fly. I, I fly mostly um, along the coast in land that's not a state park, and I'm not interfering with anyone. My, my theory is um, when I'm flying, I never fly um, over large groups of people, I never fly over traffic, I never fly near an airport. Um, and I really enjoy flying with no one else around because then they don't ask you the classic questions. How high can you go? How much did that cost? Um, <laughs> how far can that fly? How long did it stay up? Are you taking a picture of me? Yeah. Are you taking a picture of me? <laughs> wow. You got that, that's an interesting point. As somebody approaches you, they're either going to be super negative or they're going to be positive. And, I'm, and I'm, as they're approaching, I'm going, okay, what's this person going to be? <laughs> Which one are they going to be? If you're taking a picture of me, then I'm calling the police. Um, I went to a nude beach by mistake. <laughs> um, who knew that Baker Beach was here in San Francisco? I didn't know. I, I, I didn't know it was a nude beach. And I walked down there uh, with the copter onto the nude beach. Oh, that was a bad mistake. Um, I got out quickly. I got out quickly. What exposure did you use? Too much. Too much. Too much. Too much. Too much. Exposure. There are only four prizes left. Okay, hurry. <clears throat> Here we are in Lightroom um, Mobile. Um, I can't tell you these things, but we're, do we're doing some amazing um, updates to Lightroom Mobile in the next few months that are really, really nice stuff. And I can say, and I can't tell you that we're going to integrate the whole system so that it all looks and feels the same across all platforms. I didn't tell you that. I didn't tell you that. Did you? Did you all under non-disclosure here? So I, so I can tell you that we have a whole new interface and we have a, did you really? Did they really sign? We also have people online. Oh, no, we can't say. Uh, yeah, can't sign the NDA. I didn't know that. So turn off the people. Okay, we're shutting you down. We're going to talk about really cool new things that are coming out. <laughs> How many people are screaming? How many people are online? 21. 21, okay. Okay, but I'm really excited about that, and I had to t deinstall them from my machine just so I could show you, and I can't, I can't remember how to use this. Um, okay, I want to do a project um, uh, transfer from Lightroom uh, mobile over to Photoshop Mix. And this may look like a cool door. It looks pretty uh, neat. Um, I photographed this in uh, the New Mexico Santa Fe area. And um, I've adjusted my uh, highlights. You can see I brought those up and my exposure. Um, white balance, blacks, clarity. I love clarity over here to the left under dehaze. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Look at that dehaze. Bad? Better. Worse. <laughs> There's a point of too much dehaze, but I love the, the quality of the blue quality gives it the richness to the colors with dehaze, but you can push dehaze too far and dehaze will actually add a yellow or orange cast to your image. Sometimes it looks good, sometimes it looks bad. Um, but in this case I like it because I'm creating art. I'm setting up all my um, uh, 
set up my settings here. Let's see if I, oh, I do. Over here under um, selective adjustments, you can see that I have some selections I've made here. I'm highlighting the foreground. I'm making a selection and then bringing up my highlights within that selected region. And again, the exposure and highlights here on the door. I can adjust the size of those and put down as many as I want within a document. This is the same thing you can do in Lightroom on the desktop. And of course, if I share this back to Lightroom on the desktop, all of these adjustments will be there. And I, I think it's one of the, the, my best and most used features here in Lightroom has to be the ability to put in a radial or linear gradient um, adjustment into your image because I find sometimes images just look, it's just sort of flat and boring, but if you can put in a light source that lights up the door and lights the entry to the door, I think you can really do some amazing things to your images. Um, um, you know, I've been standing this whole time, I'm just thinking, wouldn't it be nice to sit? Can you still see me? <laughs> um, I, 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 the beautiful quality of moving your highlights and targeting the user's eye. Think about this on your photographs. The more boring and dull photographs, uh, you can really do some amazing things just by targeting where your light source is. And you can target this and make your light source inside or tap this icon in the upper left hand to uh, make your adjustments outside the selection or inside the selection in this process and you can get some gorgeous vignettes and adjustments. You have vignettes built in to Lightroom Mobile, but it's a default vignette, vignette, and this one allows you to move it around. If this is the one thing, I think if you only had one device, one feature in Lightroom Mobile to really get creative, it has to be this um, adjustment, um, these adjustments is something you should really consider and look at. Try them out even in Lightroom on the desktop or Lightroom mobile. Amazing creativity. Look for, you're going through your photos and you find some, boy, is this boring and dull? There's no, you know, it's just a photograph of this person, but put a spotlight on that person or highlight an area within the image. Make everything else dark. Bingo, it's one of my, um, you can get more likes this way. <laughs> the photograph. <laughs> just target your viewer. You, you got this really great photograph, but wouldn't it be nice if it looked like there was a beam of light hitting the tops of the mountain instead of just an even uh, exposure across the mountain range, put a beam of light on it, and I think it really adds to the interest of the piece. And it's done with this um, feature where I can add additional sources of light over here to the left, click and drag, and add them in and make adjustments to them or trash them with the trash can. Let's go back in time. I'm gonna hit my undo and bring this back um, uh, to the beginning here. So I've made my adjustments, but now I wanna go beyond this. Um, I'm all done with that. Go back to edit. In the upper right hand corner, I'm here inside of Lightroom Mobile. And of course, everything I do here on my iPad will also appear here on my phone or on my desktop. All adjustments are shared as long as we're connected with a Wi-Fi connection. I'm now going to go to the upper right-hand corner and open in. I can uh, edit it and do adjustments to um, the warping of the image or the healing of the image. These are two things you can't do inside of Lightroom Mobile. I can't warp it, and I can't heal sections yet. Um, but um, so if I have a need to do compositing or adjustments, then I'm going to go off to Photoshop Mix. And I'm going to go maximum available size. I'm going to use all of the pixels from the original iPhone. And then I'm going to say import into Photoshop Mix. And if life is good, life is good. It didn't crash. <laughs> um, 
Here's the image in mix. I can have up to five layers in mix. I have adjustments, cropping, I have masking, I have blend modes, and then I have more over to the right where I can do healing and liquefy adjustments. Let's tap on the right here and let's, um, let's duplicate this. This is the latest version of Photoshop Mix, has some great new features. If you tap on the image itself, you can then duplicate, um, rotate, copy, attach blend modes. Let's tap on the top one again, and I'm gonna flip it. Tap on it again, and let's do a blend mode. Let's do a darken. So I'm starting to get um, um, blending um, possibilities. It's pretty dark up there. Let's, um, I can, I'll bring this up here in a minute. Um, I can then, let's duplicate this one more time. Let's duplicate. Let's increase the, let's make some adjustments and bring up the highlights. I'm adjusting, hitting my highlights. Bring up the highlights, bring up the exposure. So you have some similar functions. Did I choose the right layer? I've chosen the top layer. Oh, turn the blend mode to normal. Then, yes, and if, remember, if you tell me of a really bad mistake I made during the presentation, but you tell me after I'm all done, win a prize. Um, tell me, embarrass me while I'm giving my presentation, the person next to you wins a prize. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, okay where? Uh, we, do, we change the blend mode and we're going to adjustments. And this time, we're going to do exposure. Okay, good. Okay, we're bringing up the exposure. We're turning on the light like this. And then let's click uh, the accept those adjustments. So here's where the masking comes in to this process. I build up layers of effects, and now I want to do painting with light. So I make, another, I make one layer that's lighter than the other layers, and even sometimes I will use this effect, I'll do two different exposures in Lightroom, um, uh, Lightroom Mobile. I'll do two different exposures and then I'll import those different exposures or different photos if I'm on a tripod. So I can then blend exposures together with Lightroom, Photoshop, with Photoshop Mix. And that's the reason I've got Lightroom Mobile, lets me do all of my adjustments, but Mix lets me mix different images together with blending and masking and blend modes. Okay, we got this top one and we're going to do a cutout is what it's called. So masking is called cutout and it has a smart mode that allows us to do edge detection. I could do edge detection on just the door, but I'm gonna go into the basic mode which lets me brush in the selection. I can change my brush size here like this. The hardness of the brush, let's have a nice soft brush. Let's have a zero. And as I, I'm adding to the selection, and I'm painting here, as you can see, I'm gonna now paint in this area. Yes, you can see this happening on your screen. So I have a soft edge brush so I can paint that in. Ooh, that's rather interesting, isn't it? Okay, so really looks like I have a spotlight coming in on this nail. So I'm, I'm masking the top layer and I'm making a selection with my finger of the areas that I wanna keep because I'm using the plus sign. If I select the minus, then I can subtract from those areas and switch back and forth and change my size. But here's the feature that I really like. I'll set up the area that I like, and then I do a refine to this. And refine is letting you soften your mask as you would in Photoshop. You have the same functions and capabilities you have in Photoshop to go in, um, refine this with a feather. I'm, type, I'm selecting a feather, and now I'm moving my finger up and I can start to go up to 100%, and now I've feathered that selection. Let's go back to the basic, and I can go in 
and add more. I'm looking at your screen. There we go. Let's add a little bit more here like that. And then I can start to paint in the light with a technique like this. So I'll do this quite often, um, combining different uh, images together, flipping images. We can click, we can tap here to the right. I can, of course, move those images around to different locations. Ooh, that's interesting. Um, it's art. Uh, undo that move. You can rotate those and s scale them. Yes. So when you did your your um, your masking there. Yes. And then you went to do the refined edges and you soften the mask. When you went back to the masking again. Yes. Is that a new? That, that doesn't use that same it, refined. It does. Very good. Did I miss that one? So no, let's go, I, I it, it, let's go back. Me. Let's go back and do that again. So we, um, once you've set up the, once you've set up the refined under refine. Come on. Once you've set the feathering at 100, it holds that refinement, and as you go back and add or subtract from the selection, it continues until you hit the check mark. Watch it. Watch what happens. Did you see that? Yeah. Let's do that again. So I'm painting over here. You see how it, it's very, very solid right now? Right. And then I stop, and now it applies the 100% the, um, um, refined edge. So it is built in. So the answer is, once you set up the refined edge as being soft, it continues to be soft. The one thing that I don't like is that I want to have some areas that are soft and some areas that are hard edge and if i if i want to do a situation like that then i have to build a second layer that has a hard edge and overlay it and build the layers in the process so once you hit the check mark and yes. it takes that yes if you try to do any more masking it's still going to go back to that that yeah. same refinement that is right so it's built into that whole layer that whole layer very good very good very good. <laughs> did you understand? I did. Okay. <laughs> very good. Very good. I actually understood what I said. So you win a prize. <laughs> okay. Because that takes a lot. Um, yeah. And look what happens. I can go back to refine and drop it back down to zero. And now it's more of that spotlight. So I've removed that softness. So it's, it's non-destructive, like a smart object. You're adding a blur to the mask non-destructively. Wow, I thought that sounded good. Um, and if I save this document, um, back to the iPad, this is, always remains interactive, and you can come back in and adjust it at any time, um, which is really nice. And Here's the other thing. So we've set this all up. We check the box in the lower right. We like um, the results we see here. It's working well for us. I have multiple layers. Here's the cool thing. In the upper right-hand corner, the export button. Look at the possibilities. I can send it off to Behance, off to my Creative Cloud library. If I'm a member, I can save it there. I can send it directly to Lightroom and do additional work on it. I can sell it on Adobe Stock. <laughs> um, I can take it to the Creative Cloud. Um, but the one I use a lot is Send to Photoshop CC. So now it's going to, this is the best thing, because I'm, there's something I want to do to this document. I want to use a, a filter. I want to find edges or something that only exists inside of Photoshop. And so it's now rendering the layers with the masks that I just created, the soft edge masks, it's building the layers. And when it's done, it will then send it up to the cloud. It'll go into your collection in, um, on your desktop machine. And then if Photoshop is running over on your desktop, I wonder if this is going to do it or not. 
Um, it goes into the cloud. The cloud then signals Photoshop and says, a, a new file has arrived, and it will then launch Photoshop and open it up. I wonder if it's going to interrupt our movie and actually open up Photoshop. That would be pretty impressive if it did that. <laughs> I don't know if it is. Um, but if I have Photoshop running on my desktop, immediately this will open with all of its layers and adjustments. Are the layers, uh, are the layers smart objects or are they just masked images? Um, they're masked images, not smart objects. It's all, um, I wish we had a smart object. I wish all of my controls were still there. I wish, yeah, yeah. Okay, watch out, watch out. Oh my goodness, is it gonna work? Oh, wow. Oh, are you impressed? It is a smart object. Oh, let's go over here. Is it a smart object? Yeah, it is. Oh my gosh, okay. Micah, Micah, yes. Good lord. Of course it's a smart object, Micah. I do that all the time. I do that all the time. Oh, that's terrible. Look at my, look at my soft, soft edge mask being applied to that layer. And then the two layers with the blend modes attached. This is... This, this is why I love this technology, because I can sit there on the couch, drinking my coffee in the morning, and comp something up, and then go, oh, I want to do one more thing, but I need to do it in Photoshop, and I just send it off, and it pops up upstairs on the um, machine upstairs and ready to go and continue the project. Wow, that was impressive. So um, here's, here's something I don't understand about oh. how mobile works with the rest, you know, with tablets and all that. Yeah. We only get like two gig of storage on the cloud. It's like nothing. So, Ouch! So, <laughs> yeah, it's... And all of the Adobe Cloud stuff over the many, many years has yeah. gone away, and I get a whole two gig. So isn't this just going up to the cloud and then I've got to catch it from, from Photoshop and then I've got to take it out somehow and so I have room for my next photo? <laughs> have a lovely evening. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the two gigs is it's very, very minimal. It's 20 gigs, 20 gigs, not two. Well, not if you're on the, the Lightroom, the, on the photography thing. Oh, yes. Yeah, Which, you're not. You haven't bought into the full package, and the full package. Well, at work, yeah. yes, but at home when I'm just doing my photography. I stuff. I feel your pain. But it's been removed. You're never allowed yes. to remove things from so, us, and, and we used to have so much. Work. Wow. Yes, I agree that there's not enough of space there, but maybe the future holds exciting new <laughs> possibilities. <laughs> I see a solution for you soon. Okay. You'll like it. It's big. <laughs> it's big. Russell, you're yeah. going to rub this guy. You're going to rub it? Yeah. Now say it to Say what? Am I, am I the genie's coming out? Your future is coming out. Oh, well, the future. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that. It's my brain. <laughs> okay, I can see the future. Anti you, anti you. No, no. Because I thought I was missing something really kind of dumb. No, you're not. Um, storage, storage, storage. Once that, this is now, I'm a full member of the Creative Cloud, so I've got 20 gigs. But yes, this is taking up some of my space. And I now, what I'm really going to do is do some adjustments in Photoshop. Oh, do some adjustments. Where did we go? We do some adjustments in Photoshop, and um, you have too many icons. Yeah, we got too many. Um, and save this off, but I'd have to remove it if I had a very little storage space. Storage space. Ouch. Okay. Because yeah, ultimately, I want Adobe to be my, where I would back up all of my photos someday. But right now, I have to use that awful Amazon. Wow. Wow, okay, that's reality. I don't get out enough to hear this reality. I live in a little bubble of, the, I have more space. I, I have, wow, I feel your pain. Okay. The future is bright. <laughs> okay, okay, oh, time check, time check. Six minutes. Six minutes, okay, I just wanted to show you. Um, that has saved it to the my Creative Cloud folder called Photoshop. Um, 
if I go over here to my desktop and I go to um, Photoshop, we go up to this icon here, we go to our assets, our files, open folder. Inside this is a folder called Photoshop and then here at the top should be, that's not the one, let's reverse, it should be at the bottom then. This should appear here, this should appear, it should be today's date, modified. That's not it. <laughs> should be in that folder. Okay, this always happens. My brain's not, it's only half on at the moment. We'll figure this one out later. It should be in that folder. It should arrive into the Photoshop folder inside of your Creative Cloud storage and then it signals Photoshop and opens it from that location but it is taking up space and you'd have to remove it if you're running out of space. Syncing's paused. How could syncing be paused? And we got the image. Like the Titanic. Yes, I could crash and sink any moment now if I push too many buttons. Okay, let's just do one last thing before we finish the evening up here. Quick time. I just wanted to go back here. What did I want to show? Oh, let's take a look at um, fire breathing, fire breathing. What did we say, um, Micah, we, we used the iPhone with its burst, burst mode. mode. <clears throat> <clears throat> if you ever go off to shoot fire hose shot fire breathers, <laughs> I tracked this guy down. I'd always wanted to do fire breathing and tracked him down and bribed him into um, coming down here onto the Davenport Beach down near the, um, the old uh, cement plant. Burst mode on the iPhone, another reason to use the iPhone's camera is in the burst mode. You can um, tap and hold. But wait, we added burst mode function to Lightroom Mobile. You can now hold the volume control in Lightroom Mobile and get burst mode. So I can get multiple photographs. In a situation like this, a person swinging, a person doing breathing fire, the burst mode is the, really the way to go with the iPhone because you're capturing this animation, this rapid fire of imagery and you can get all the moments of a situation like this if you have a real camera you can click the exact moment but with the iPhone the burst mode on action like this is really really helpful this is a, a great example of an image as we close the evening here um, if if I'm here yes not okay. <laughs> if I'm going back into my Oh, I'm in Mix. I'm in Mix. I'm not in um, Lightroom Mobile. Yes, question. <clears throat> mm-hmm. There is a nude beach. I found that one, too. <laughs> I was photographing waves, shooting straight down, and I thought I was in, and no one would possibly be in this area. Well, there they were. <laughs> I left quickly. <clears throat> I have a funny habit of finding nude beaches. This is not a nude beach. This is the Davenport. Really gorgeous. There's a really dangerous way to walk down there. Um, but a really, really beautiful apocalyptic sort of structure that, that um, makes for great photography down there on the beach. Okay, we're gonna. It's getting late. I'm. Uh, I think I, I made my point. I, my point is that mobile is great, fun, easy, simple with Lightroom Mobile. And um, check out my photos. Um, go on an adventure. And I recall I'm flying to Greenland and everyone is counting the ounces that they're carrying with them because you only can have 20 kilos with you. I came in at 10. And, um, <laughs> and all my travel stuff. And so that's the other beauty of traveling with long uh, locations like that. They have a restriction on the amount you can carry with you. And traveling this light was really quite nice. And I think you can do it 
especially if you have a nighttime camera, the Huawei, and the daytime camera, the iPhone, camera phone, really gorgeous. And the fact that it automatically uploads everything to the Creative Cloud is fantastic. Yes? Two questions. One on the drone. Can it take different angles, or is it just shoot straight down? <clears throat> the drone has the ability to, you look this way, you pivot to see around, but you can run the angle of the camera straight or straight. Um, can you adjust that from the ground? What can you roll in front? Yes. You have a 90 degree, a, yes. <coughs> full. Yeah, question, just a selfish plug for yourself. What was going on next Tuesday again? <laughs> you, you're winning all your prizes no, today. Next Tuesday is very important. That's the solar eclipse talk with my friend um, Fred Espinac, the expert on solar photography in this room with pizza. We start eating pizza at 5. And then Fred will start speaking at 6. Um, I know that it's difficult for people to get here that quite that early, but we'll be ch chatting with Fred, and you'll be able to ask him questions directly. Net, that is on the sixth day of June, here in this room, 5 o'clock pizza. Um, you can sign up online. I'm adding a few more spaces online. Um, I will add those tomorrow. Look for it tomorrow afternoon to find information and you can go to the Everbright site and look for at, look for search for Eclipse and you'll find the event. Yes? So you, at the beginning of the whole thing we asked, you asked about, you know, who, who's a member of the cloud, who's got this, mm -hmm. who's got that. And then you started talking about the Eclipse, but you never asked how many people have actually experienced the total Eclipse. I, I was going to ask. Have you experienced a total eclipse? Yes. You win the final package. <laughs> and where did you experience it? The middle of the Indian Ocean on an island called Diego Garcia. 1976. 1976. I'm in college. I didn't know what eclipses were at the time. If I had, I'd probably been there. The first one I saw was in on the island of Aruba. Um, You do it this way. You go down here and you say, um, oh, you want to get Lightroom Mobile. <whistles> One moment, please. <clears throat> so we're in Lightroom Mobile. We go to the flyout menu we, and you say, edit in, maximum. If you do edit in and then wait for it, wait, I should have done. And we want to do some liquify. So we tap on liquify, so it goes to mix. Good question, Micah. What's the difference between fix and mix? Well, mix, um, fix, lets you fix the image with healing or with liquify. So healing and liquify exist inside of fix, and layering exists inside of mix. So you mix layers or you fix the image, and they're tied together. And so we're going to do some warping. We want to warp this, uh, let's do some major warping to this. So this is feature inside of m fix. So I'm fixing this with healing or warping. Maybe who says that fixing with warping? I warp this, then 
Micah, I hit save, return to Lightroom mobile. Where was that at? Right there at the top. Okay. So now, wait for it. You see the new copy appears here? Mm -hmm. So it takes a copy of the current state of adjustments, sends it over to fix, it lets me correct, make corrections, make it adjustments, and then brings the copy right back into my catalog over here. Oh, good one, good one. Okay, let's bring up the lights. Um, and um, uh, I think that's it. Am I done? Yep. I'm done, I'm done. <clears throat> Lots of stuff, lots of stuff. And uh, be sure and see if you can show up next week. More pizza, more food, and uh, throw our doors open. I'll hang around here. You can answer, I'll answer a few questions, and I'll be packing at the same time. And um, thank you for coming.